Hi, hello, what is up guys? We have another video today. Uh, it's probably a surprise to you that I've been uploading more than once a month. Uh, we're gonna try and upload a little bit more consistently and today we have a little bit of a different video. We just did a review on a slider that a company sent to me and we have another product we're talking about today. It is a monitor sent to me by Port Keys and this is the BM5 monitor and I really like this monitor. I wanna talk about it a lot, but I don't wanna just do a straight tech review type video because I already did that with another monitor. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how I set up to do my talking head segments for YouTube videos and kinda of show you how I use this monitor in those setups and why it's my favorite monitor yet. Okay, so first the discussion is where do I film? Uh, this is our kitchen. I like to film here in this little butler's pantry right here. There's just nice light and I can create some nice depth and use this nice big island to uh, show some products off. Uh, I used to film in my office, but you know that really isn't a viable option just because there's not much depth and uh, it gets kind of messy with all the gear in there. So this is our spot and typically the shot is gonna be something like this. So as you guys probably know, we are at this point shooting our YouTube videos on the Sony FX9. This camera is amazing uh, and it is the best camera available in terms of quality that I own, that I've ever owned. Uh, so we're gonna set this up for the FX9 and uh, you're probably noticing, uh, hey, that's not a 300D up there, that's like some kind of LED panel. Uh, yes, this is the Nanlite Compact 200. It's uh, a light I got recently and I'm gonna talk more about it in a future video. So just to talk a little bit more about my lighting philosophy, this apartment has been a little bit tricky to shoot in and for a lot of videos, I've just opened up the windows and let all this light in and it gets really dull doing that. So while sometimes windows can be great if you don't have lights with you or if you don't have a lot of control over the situation, when I'm actually taking the time to light something, I like the situation, the lighting to be as controlled as possible. So so I shut these guys. So this shot gives you a really good idea of what this light is doing. You can see it is just blasting this side of the room and it's bouncing everywhere. We're getting lots of spill. We want the light to be as dynamic as possible. If I'm sitting on one of these stools right there, I don't want the light spilling onto the background this much. So see, this is what we're looking right now, and it's not dynamic, there's not enough contrast. Uh, this is not something that I would really be happy with the look of. So we're gonna move this light over this way a little bit so it hits me from this side and it doesn't spill onto the background. So the next thing that we set up are the Nanolite Pavo tubes. I usually use about three of them. I use two of them to kind of set the mood and add a little bit of ambience to the shot. And then the other one I use Daylight Balance to do a backlight on me. So I'm thinking this one is going to be uh, green today. So we're gonna do some green mood lighting, set the tone for the video, and let's do a little bit of painting with the light. So at this point we've got most of the lights set up. We're just about ready for the final look. We've got our key light right here behind me. We've got a nan light right there doing the yellow ambience, a nan light here doing the green ambience, and then we've got a strong backlight. And that's something that I've gone back and forth on a little bit. For a while I went through this phase of just liking the look of one light. Kind of a more gritty, uh, more moody type look, but I like the strong backlight a little bit more now. It, it kind of has come from watching a lot more TV and films 
And I just feel like the backlight is really important and really helps separate the subject. So typically for audio, I am setting up this Deity S-Mic 2. Uh, I don't use the windscreen, but I'm setting this up on a C-Stand. Since I'm already wearing the lav, I'm not gonna do that this time, but this is my setup. It's just a newer boom stand and the Deity S-Mic 2 for audio. So at this point, the setup is pretty much finished. Uh, the only thing is our port keys BM5 monitor. So I'm gonna jump in on the FX9 and I'm gonna tell you guys exactly why this monitor is an important piece of a setup like this and why I think monitors in general are useful tools for filmmaking. Okay, so here we are on the FX9 talking about the Port Keys BM5 monitor and why it's an important part of my kit for what I like to call slow filmmaking. So I like to make this distinction between slow and fast filmmaking. Something that would be fast filmmaking for me is a wedding film or an event where everything is happening in a very fast manner and you have to quickly adapt and quickly switch setups, switch lenses, switch cameras. Uh, and really just make it all work in a short period of time. Something that I would call slow filmmaking is like a bio video or a commercial shoot or a music video or anything where you as the filmmaker have complete control over the situation and over the timing of everything involved in that situation. So, how does this all relate to the Port Keys BM5? Well, since I got the FX9, I was looking for a new monitor. I've previously owned the Atomus Ninja 5, Atomus Ninja Inferno, and an Andy Cine kind of cheap monitor. And none of those monitors were completely the right tool for me, but since monitors weren't a huge part of my kit, since I do a lot of fast filmmaking, it wasn't a really huge deal for me. But with the pandemic, less and less events have been going on, and I've had the opportunity to do more controlled, slower filmmaking. So I was in the market for a monitor, Port Keys sent this one over, and I know a lot of YouTubers that I follow use this monitor, so I was really excited to try it out. The biggest thing I'm finding out comparing it to my other monitor, the Ninja Inferno, is that I really don't value the ability to record in the monitor. It's really not something important to me, especially being a Sony shooter. Sony typically doesn't have a better quality output in these newer cameras like the a7 III and the FX9, so that's not a factor for me at all. But after using the Andy Cine monitor, I did want something that was well built and very professional, and the Port Keys definitely checks that box. Box. It's a very sturdy, heavy construction. It's got a nice heat sink on the back. It has an SDI in and out, which is really nice. Uh, it's got one HDMI in, and then along with that, the typical fare for monitors, false colors, peaking, zebras, function buttons, touch screen, uh, LUT inputs, which is really nice. One thing that bothered me with the Ninja Inferno is since I wasn't using it to record, I never bought the expensive SSD that goes with it, so I had no ability to load LUTs onto it. So being able to load my FX9 LUT onto this monitor was a really huge deal because I shoot in SLOG3 primarily. So when I'm doing setups like this, being able to see what I'm doing and being able to see the influence of all the different factors like lighting and audio is really, really nice. And it even allows me to set up the FX9 as the main locked off shot and then go run another camera on the slider. I can still monitor both very easily. This monitor uses the standard Sony MPF batteries that I have tons of, so no problem there. And overall, I just really love this construction. It's small enough to run with a gimbal, but then the screen is also large enough to have a really good view of what you're looking at. I've also tested this monitor outside and it is brighter than the Andy Cine one that I reviewed earlier, but all in all, if you're not spending a thousand plus dollars on a monitor, you're not going to get excellent brightness outdoors. If you're looking to shoot outdoors and get a very clear, crisp display, you should probably look into something that Small HD makes on their higher end of monitors. So all in all, that's it. I really, really enjoyed this Port Keys monitor. I hope you guys got something out of seeing me set up for a YouTube video, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.